All right, going to do a video refuting this wicked devil here, this Gabe, the street preacher. Uh, he's a work salvationist. He's a Roman Catholic, and you're going to see in this video, he just flat out says that salvation, basically, he just denies basically that, that salvation is basically all by Jesus Christ and not by yourself, and he basically says you have to live holy and, and stop sinning to be saved, okay? Uh, you can't stop sinning to be saved. That, that is work salvation, okay? Repentance according to the Bible, is you is basically godly sorrow for your sins, okay? It's nothing nothing more, nothing less, just simply godly sorrow for your sins. You feel sorry for your sins, and you come to God as a sinner and say, God save me, okay? It's not you having to stop sinning to be saved. That's work salvation. That's Roman Catholicism. And this guy, in this video, he just reeks of Roman Catholicism. He just flat out says, basically, that salvation is not, well, he doesn't say it verbatim, but he does imply that salvation is not a one-time event. It's just a continual process of work and he mixes up being a disciple with salvation and he mixes up sanctification with salvation you know he's lost he's, he's uh, trying to work his way to heaven and he's going to end up in hell because your uh, your works don't save you okay your righteousness doesn't save you okay let's get right into this i heard it being taught that if you are a born-again christian that you cannot violate the terms of salvation even if you commit sin. Um, that's true. Jesus Christ paid for my sins on the cross. I don't have to do anything to earn my salvation like you're teaching, Mr. Papist. Okay? G I'm actually, let me some scripture on that because uh, these wicked devils, they, they uh, will quote, they, they'll, they'll say their feelings, but they'll never quote scripture. So let, let me show you this. Because Jesus Christ paid for my sins on the cross, I don't have to do anything to like earn my salvation. This is Roman Catholicism. You're like a partaker in the sacrifice. You know, um, Jesus Christ. It's not once and done on the cross. It's a continual process. Roman Catholicism, Acts chapter thirteen, verse thirty. Oops, thirty-nine. Okay. I'll start at verse thirty-eight. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and women, that though, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things. See that? All things. From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. You're justified from all things. Everything. Okay? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's Colossians. I think it's Colossians 2.13. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, Colossians 2.13. And you, being dead in your sins, and the circumcision of your flesh, hath, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay? All your sins are forgiven on the cross. Not just your past sins or, or that kind of stuff. Again, that's Roman Catholicism. That's what the Catholics believe. It's not biblical salvation. It's, it's a Catholic works-based salvation. Um, Titus 2.14. I'll start at verse 13, actually. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kind of a good, makes a problem for the Trinitarians because great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ is God, contrary to the, what the Trinitarians believe. Uh, Titus 2.14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works and the final one again these, these papists they can these work salvation catholics like gate they can never handle these verses because they're trying to work their way to heaven by basically living holy and being sinless and stuff uh first john 5, 1 7 if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin okay all your sin is forgiven on the cross Okay, Jesus Christ paid for my sins. He paid the price. I don't have to somehow like co-suffer with him or or salvation. I don't have to just like basically merit my salvation. Salvation is not like some kind of loan I have to pay back. Okay, it's given to me as a free gift. I'll show you the scripture on that actually, because the wicked devils will say, hey, "Show the scripture." Well, I'll show you the scripture. Salvation is a free. Or, sorry, the grace of God which provides salvation is a free gift. Uh, Romans three, twenty three. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You're justified freely. It's a free gift. R Oops, hit the wrong button there. Romans chapter 5 and verse 15. Another verse proving that grace is a free gift. Because I'll say, and eh, it's, you know, free grace. Uh, free grace. Free grace is scriptural, okay? Not the way the easy believers and people twist it to mean, but grace is a free gift. It's not something you have to earn, like the again, like what the papists believe, the Catholics believe. Uh, Romans 5.15, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if though the offense of one many be dead, for much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, gift, again, it's a free gift, by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Okay, 
your, the grace that God gives you is free. Okay, it's not some kind of loan or some, some merit you have to earn by working and, and living sinlessly perfect. Which is what this, this work salvation Catholic devil believes. He's not saved. Let's continue. And the passage this person who's teaching this is using is located in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's go there and read the verse. It states, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now they use this word unrighteous because they believe that once you're born again, you're immediately righteous. Um, again, that's what the Bible teaches. Again, he's proving he's self-righteous. Because these heretics, these, these Catholic heretics, they deny that Christ, and they, they basically deny the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ and teach that it's basically your righteousness, your basically self-righteousness that saves you. Let me show you that. Imputed righteousness is scriptural. Once you get saved, Christ has to impute his righteousness to you. Okay, again, like he, what a self-righteous little little heretic this guy is. Oh, you know, so bad, you know, so bad that you, know, you think you're righteous. Uh, that's what the Bible teaches. Christ, he imputes his righteousness to you. Because you're a dirty sinner, you cannot earn your salvation. So Christ has to impute his righteousness to you. And people who reject that just prove they're self-righteous and they're trying to work their way to heaven. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.19 To wit that God was in Christ. Hmm, God was in Christ. Again, proving that the Godhead, that God the Father is the soul. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse twenty. Now then, we are the we are ambassadors for Christ, as God, or sorry, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Look at verse twenty one. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay, we don't have. It's not by our own self righteousness. It's we're made the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And again, Gabe he teaches proving he's self righteous. He doesn't want to come to God as a broken sinner and say, God, save me, like in Romans 10, 13. He wants to earn his own salvation. Titus 3, 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Okay? It's not by your own works of righteousness, like this uh, wicked devil is trying to teach. And you're saved, and you cannot do anything to violate the terms of salvation. But let's take a look and see who the audience is that Paul is addressing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So this letter, this epistle, is addressed to the Church of God, to the Church of God at Corinth, those that are sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be saints. This is a letter addressed to the Church, people who had received Christ, not accepted as a personal Lord and Savior, but received to as many as received him. Um, it's the same thing. When you accept Jesus Christ, you're receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior. You know, huh? It's not the same thing? Sure. Them gave he the power to become, become the sons of God, even as many as believe on his name. So therefore, one has the potential to become a son of God. See how it's turning into a, a works process? See, it doesn't happen at salvation. It's You have to become that. You have to basically earn that position. It works. That's the way he's preaching. It's works salvation. He's not. He's basically denying that salvation is a one-time event. He's, saying, he's basically teaching it's a process of works. But then he'll deny, well, I'm not a works salvationist. Yeah, you are. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Um, being a disciple is not the same thing as being saved. Okay, being a disciple comes after salvation. See again, he's mixing too. All these conditional security heretics, they always have to mix sanctification with salvation. Sanctification is basically your process after salvation of basically cleaning cleaning your life up. Salvation is a one time event. It happens at the cross. It happens when you get saved. I'll put it that way. But see, they have to blend the two together because if you blend the two together, then you can teach basically that salvation is a process of works. 
which is again what the Roman Catholics believe. It, again, this is a Roman. He's basically preaching Roman Catholicism in this uh, heretical video he made. So as we continue in the doctrines of Jesus Christ, we become the sons of God. We become a son of God. We become sanctified. We become in the likeness of Jesus Christ. So this letter here is to the sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. So this letter is to the church. We have established that now. So therefore, we can go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and notice who this scripture is being addressed to. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Notice, be not deceived. Apparently, there is a form of deception that can overtake a man, a person, even one in the church, that can lead him or her to believe that no matter what they do, after they receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're becoming sons of, and daughters of God, that no matter See, what again, they... Again, becoming sons and daughters, he's, he's turning into a process of works. Again, works salvation. Can They do after that point. They're still going to be saved. And they're going... So, again, look at that. Notice, so he says, no matter what they do after their salvation. So basically, salvation is not basically Jesus Christ paid for my sins, according to this devil. It's basically determined upon my works, my obedience, my holiness. Because he just said it, it's what you do. You know, if you do certain things, you're not saved, you know. It's, again, how is, how is this not work salvation? He, did, he like he denies I'm not a work salvationist. How is this not work salvation? You're basically saying that you have that salvation is basically uh, dependent on what you do, not on what Christ did. Going to inherit the kingdom of God. Well, that's a deception. Again, what is the kingdom of God? Okay, let me show you that because again, these heretics they they always have to twist scripture. Twisting scripture is what you have to do in order to teach the uh, satanic lie of conditional security. What is the, because they always have to say the kingdom of God is heaven. And they'll go to verses where it talks about how you won't inherit the kingdom of God and say, see, you won't inherit heaven. They've lost their salvation. Uh, what is the kingdom of, of God? Because they have no idea what it is. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's spiritual fellowship with God. That's what the kingdom of, of God is. It's not heaven. Okay? Two different things. So, again, just totally twisting the scriptures, changing definitions of words. You know, ridiculous. Again, he's a lost. He's a lost. He, again, I keep saying this over and over again, but I'm just, I'm trying to just make it very clear that devils like this, like whenever someone says that salvation is basically not Jesus Christ paid for my sins, it's basically what you have to do, you're dealing with a Roman Catholic. Just that simple. That's a deception. That is why Paul's saying, don't be deceived by those who want to come and tell you that you can live however you would want to live. Don't be deceived uh, by those who tell you that this scripture... This epistle, this word that I'm giving unto you right now, does not pertain unto you, the church of God, those who are sanctified and called to be saints. Do not think that you're, do not think that you're exempt from this word of the Lord. Yeah, he's, he's, Paul's writing to save people, okay, not people who are being saved, which is also what, funny what the modern versions say too. Okay, let me show you that right now, actually. Um, actually, no, I... I because I, I don't remember that verse off the top of my head, but the modern verse, versions basically say you're being saved, you're being sanctified. Exactly what this guy's teaching. You know, they turn salvation into a process. Know ye not? Do you not understand this? Do you not know this? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Notice, and such were some of you. And isn't that the case? And such were some of us. We were continuing, continuing to partake in these sins. Why? Because, <clears throat> excuse me, we were deceived. We were deceived into thinking that saying uh, um, a again he's he's basically saying that they're doing it when they're saved. I uh, know this was their condition before they were saved. Again, totally twisting what the verse is saying. Sinner's prayer, or inviting Jesus Christ to be, 
or to live in our heart and become our personal Lord and Savior. And at that point, an instant, we were saved. So, and therefore, basically, again, so Jesus Christ paying for the paying for my sins on the cross is not what paid for my sins, basically, because he just said again, he's saying it's not a one-time event. Um, that's what the Bible teaches. Okay, it's a one-time event. I showed you those, those scriptures earlier. He paid for all my sins on the cross. Okay. Again, what what is I mean? What what a works righteous little jerk. This work the works righteous little Pharisee this guy is, and he is a Pharisee by the way. He he just he's 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 just as prideful, just as self righteous as the Pharisees, you know. Modern day Pharisees, what these all these guys are. For anything after that, any form of lifestyle we lived after that, would not forfeit our salvation. Would not violate the terms of salvation. We were deceived. The terms of salvation. A uh, chapter and verse, please. Where does the Bible say terms of salvation? Okay, grace through faith, repentance, you come to God in godly sorrow, okay, not stop sinning, and you call upon God. There's no terms of salvation you have to keep. It's not a loan you have to pay back, you know. But he's not a work salvationist, sure. And many of us, we did just that. We continued to smoke. We continued to drink. We dabbled in fornication. Uh, didn't Jesus Christ pay for your sins on the cross? Or are you having to pay for your own sins by give, by turning from sins or that kind of stuff? Because here's what it comes down to. If Jesus Christ didn't pay for your if you're having to stop sinning to save yourself, then that means you're paying for your sin. You're, that means you yourself are paying for your own sins, not Jesus Christ. You know? Ridiculous. I, and of course, you should live holy. I'm not denying that. And another thing these guys don't understand is they don't understand biblical sanctification. They don't understand biblical regeneration. They think it's you having to regenerate yourself. No, it's the Holy Spirit that comes in and regenerates you. You know, you don't do it yourself. The Holy Spirit comes in, cleans your life up, gets sin out of your life. Okay? You're not having to do it yourself to earn your salvation like these, these little Catholics believe. Sex before marriage. And we called ourselves Christian. But as we begin to heed the conviction and the promptings of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God by leading us to scriptures like in Revelation 3.16. I would that you were hot or cold. But because um, our who is Revelation written to? It's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not written for Christians today. Okay, Revelation four, Reve the book of Revelation. If you read it, it totally contradicts what Paul wrote in his epistles that you're not saved by works. I mean, Revelation three totally contradicts it, but it's written for Christians. Uh, no, it's written for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for us today. Today, and again, they're all, I forgot to mention this earlier, but they're non-dispensational. They'll go to verses in the Old Testament. They'll go to verses that are for people in the time of Jacob's trouble, and they'll just blend it all together and apply it for us today. When that's not the case at all. I mean, I mean, I mean, they'll say that the whole Bible is for salvation today. No, it's not. Okay, Paul is our apostle. Okay, Romans eleven thirteen talks about how Paul is our apostle. Okay, our our gospel should primarily come from the Pauline epistles. Okay, you can use other verses to convict people of sins, but when it comes to actually presenting how to be saved, you go to Paul's letters. Okay, like a non-dispensational, like all kinds of heresy you get into. But lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Or Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. And again, having to go to Hebrews 10, again, who is that written to? It's written to Hebrews, hence the name, the book of Hebrews. It's written to Jews in the time of Jacob trouble. It's not written for Christians. You know, failure to rightly divide the word of truth again. There can be some who are nigh unto cursing. If we continue to sin willfully, there no longer remains any sacrifice for our sins. And the scriptures go on and on telling us about the potentiality of one who has come into the faith being able to lose their faith and lose their inheritance. We read the story of Esau. So apparently we're back under the Old Testament now. He's going back to the Old Testament now. Um, Esau was under the Old Testament. He's not under... He did, I mean, first of all, it was before the crucifixion, way before the crucifixion. Second of all, uh, we're not Jews under, under the Old Testament. And this is before the nation, nation of Israel even existed. You know? Huh? So we're back under the Old Testament now, apparently. Who shed tears. And it wasn't granted unto him repentance. We understand that there's a, there's a godly sorrow and there's a worldly sorrow. And many who live in the lukewarm uh, lifestyle uh, partake in a type of worldly sorrow. They're sad that they got caught. But they're not truly sad and, and in, in contrition over their sin and violation towards God. So yes, we were deceived. Many of us who came out of a lukewarm lifestyle. Thank God, as the Bible says, awake to righteousness and sin not. 
for some have not the knowledge of God. And that is what it is. When you come out of a lukewarm state and God visits you in your sin, it's an eye awakening, soul awakening experience. And it can I be. Mean, he sounds like a new ager. It's an eye opening. God comes to you. you know, he sounds like a new ager. You know? He's, talk, he's talking just like a, a new age, you know, type of mystic or whatever. A very damning experience or tormenting experience. Depending on the amount of, of 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 sin you've committed, and how deep you were in the lukewarm lifestyle, it's a it's a soul awakening experience, a tormenting experience that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Well, where does the Bible say it's a tormenting soul awakening experience? Where is this at in the Bible? You know, with this, with these charismatics, they always have to they, they they always have to go by their feelings. You know, where I mean, where, chapter and verse for any of us. So we thank God for a scripture like 1 Corinthians 6, 9 because Paul is telling it to us like it is. Telling it to the church of God. Telling it to those who receive Christ. Telling it to those who claim to be Christians. Do you not know that the unrighteous yeah, shall again, not... Yeah, saved people. He's talking to saved people. He's not talking to people who are working their way to heaven. You know, and when it's, again, when it says kingdom of God, it's talking about spiritual fellowship. Okay? When you sin, you get out of fellowship with God, you can mess up your life, but you're still saved. Because again, salvation is not you, it's not based on what you do, it's not based on your works, it's about what Jesus Christ did for you. You know, it's, it's given to you by God, and you're not having to work that work for it. Not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, no, Paul, I didn't know that. I was told that if I repeated a sinner's prayer, and I confessed Jesus Christ as my, as my personal Lord and Savior, that I was saved. That was my ticket. My gift. Again. So Jesus Christ didn't pay for your sins on the cross. So Jesus Christ dying on the cross was not enough for your sins. What a wicked devil this guy is. Get out of jail free card. I didn't know. Be not deceived. I was deceived, Brother Paul. I was deceived. But God had mercy upon me. I came to the conclusion that I was a lukewarm Christian. That I was deceived. That I was under a false impression that no matter what I did, I can be saved, still drink, still smoke, still watch porn, still commit right. I mean, again, just totally, fornication. Totally and I was based. Um, let me share some scripture that makes a problem for these, these wicked devils who teach this, this uh, damnable heresy of conditional security. Because it works salvation. Again, I keep saying this, but it's, if, you're how, if you're not, if you, you if, I'll say it this way, if you can lose your salvation, then that means you're saved by works, because that means you're having to do something to keep yourself saved. You know? And if salvation is not Jesus Christ paid it all it's once and done, then, again, it's a process. Then that means, again, you're working your way to heaven. But verses on eternal security. Here's, here's verses these, these wicked devils can never handle. These, uh, and again, self-righteous people, self-righteous heretics like these, you always have to run to the book of Hebrews, you know. Uh, Ephesians 1.13, Whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And, and there's so many scriptures I can go to that prove that you can't lose your salvation. I mean, here's, I'll just show you a couple of them right now. Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. And if you read the context of this passage, grieving the Holy Spirit means you're, like, you're living in sin. You can grieve the Holy Spirit, but you're still sealed. Okay? So again, you're sealed until the day of redemption. When you sin, you just you only grieve the Holy Spirit, if you read the context right there. Because he lists a bunch of sins, and it says grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So, sinning causes you to grieve the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, but you're still sealed until the day of redemption. Um, I'm trying to think of some more scriptures to go to. Uh, there, was, there was one, I can't, I can't remember where it is off the top of my head, but I think it's for 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. I think that's the one I was looking for. And then another verse talking about how you're sealed. For, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. He seals us. You know? So what, do you become unsealed? And, and of course, I've, I've heard these, these heretics they will try to say, well, you can become unsealed. That seal can be broken. Well, that's a problem, though, because John chapter 10, verses 28 because apparently, if you if you say the seal can be broken, the seal of the Holy Spirit, if you say it can be broken, then you're apparently you apparently think you're better than God, because Jesus Christ says in John chapter ten, verse twenty eight and twenty nine, and I gave unto them eternal life. Yes, Jesus Christ, He gives us eternal life. We don't have to give it ourselves by enduring to the end or, or striving in holiness. And they shall look at this. 
never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You can't pluck out of God's hand. But you can apparently pluck yourself out of God's hand. You can unseal yourself. So apparently you think you're better than God, if that's the case. And again, Jesus Christ says, we will, he says, he says we'll never perish. You know, we're not going to perish. We'll, ne we'll never perish. Uh, here's, a, here's a really good one these, these uh, works salvation Catholics can never handle. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. Here's a really good one to use against them. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, like at verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Okay? You have a place in heaven, it doesn't fade away, and you're kept by the power of God. You know? You're kept. You're kept. You know? You're sealed. You can't lose that. If you could lose that, then you're working your way to heaven. Uh, or that's oh, yeah, John chapter. Here's another good one. John chapter five, and verse twenty-four. I think it is. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. You, you won't come into condemnation. It's, it's just that simple. When Jesus Christ gives you eternal life, you're not going to perish. John chapter 6 and verse 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should, look at this, I should lose nothing, which are raised up again at the last day. So again, you're kept by the power of God. He won't lose you. Like he says in this verse, he'll lose nothing. You know, it, it's just so simple. You cannot lose the salvation because it's not yours to begin with. It's God's salvation that he gives you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 7 to 9. So that you become a, sorry, so that you be, yeah, you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, look at verse 8, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're confirmed. He confirms you unto the end. You're sealed. You're kept by the power of God. When he saves you, he keeps you saved. 2 Timothy 4.18 and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. He preserved you. You know? It's not your salvation, because it's salvation that God gives you. And, and there's other scriptures too I can use. I mean, there's Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, which talks about, that you know, talks about how nothing can separate you from the love of God. I mean, there's so many scriptures. But, um, work salvation, heretics... And, you know, charismatics is what he's a charismatic, you know, bat tongue talking wing nut. But uh, work salvation devils like this, they're they're self righteous. They don't want to come to the end of their their sinful condition and come to the end of their self themselves and say, Hey, I'm a sinner. I need to get saved. This this guy will never. I mean, he's he's filled with pride. He will he will never come to God as a broken sinner because he thinks he's having to earn his salvation by living holy. So he thinks he's holy without Jesus Christ, basically. So. He's prideful, and, and, and most of these work salvation street preachers are prideful. They will not come, they will not come to God as a broken sinner, and admit to being a sinner that's saved by the grace of God. Oh no, no, no! They're they're not a sinner. They're a, a sinless saint that is basically justifying himself by good works. He's a Roman Catholic. Okay, there's, there's just no way no way around it. What he's preaching in this video is exactly what Roman Catholics believe in terms of salvation, and not what the Bible believes. It's what the, the what the uh, Catholic Catechism believes essentially, what it teaches. So don't don't be deceived by wicked devils like this. I mean, he. I mean, and I keep saying this, but it's just it's just it's true. These street preachers they all they all teach Roman Catholicism. So don't be deceived by by wicked devils like this. Don't let them steal your joy that you have in Christ, because you are sealed. You are kept by the power of God. You're confirmed to the end. You can't lose it. Okay. Don't be deceived by wicked heretics like this. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.